Welcome back to The Graham Stephan Show. My name is Graham and welcome to my show. And today we're gonna be doing a lesson in business on how to make money and uh, not just any amount of money, by the way, how to make $20,000 a month. And that is all thanks to this video from Vice. It's titled, Making $20,000 a Month Selling Street Cocktails in New York City. Wait for it side hustles. So let's figure out how he is making $20,000 a month doing this. But really quick, before we do that, we got to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm to support the fellow entrepreneur. With that said, let's start the video. You drink it, huh? Yeah, everybody's drinking. Y'all drink it, right? You know, they remind me of the kids at school who always used to show up with like a big backpack full of candy and they would sell it for like a dollar each. And by the end of the day, they would have made like 40, 50 dollars. And here's the thing I never understood. Sometimes those kids got in trouble for going to school and selling candy. And I'm like, why would they get in trouble? They're doing a service to all the other kids. You would know that if you wanted a Snickers bar, hey, you go over to Joe over here and Joe will sell you a Snickers bar. That to me is like the true entrepreneurial spirit. They're taking initiative, they're making money. I don't know why you would ever punish kids for that, but this just seems like the adult version of just doing that, except now you're selling alcohol on the streets. My name is Obsession Faluke. Professionally, I'm a first assistant director on production sets. I'm an ex-professional basketball player. I also coach kids. And on the side, I make these drinks called Oye's. What doesn't he do? He's doing everything. How does he have the time to do all of this? That's what I want to know. I have been making drinks since 2005. I started in college. Now, everybody knows me as Oye Mayo. I'm the guy with the drinks, I'm the guy with the Oyes. Everybody in New York City calls them nutcrackers. I want an Oye now. I'm just curious what it tastes like. Like imagine that, I can snap my fingers and all of a sudden I got an Oye here. I, I rarely drink, by the way, but when I do, uh, I'll have a sip of an Oye. On a great month, no rain, all sun. Hey! I mean, you can make upwards, it's 20K. Wow, that's good for him. How is he not selling this in shelves? See, I wanna know if this is like some sort of garage operation where he's just going and doing this himself, going selling it off the streets. Why can't this be on the shelves? Why can't you go into a 7-Eleven, be like, hey, I want 10,000 Oyes. Like, I think he needs to be partnering with one of like the big drink brands and really taking this from 20,000 a month to $200,000 a month. I don't do things I can't promote. This is the reason why I was never a drug dealer, the reason why I was never a pimp, because I can't promote that. My drink, I can promote. That's smart, he's a really smart guy because this way he could at least grow it, it's sustainable. It's not gonna be something you could just do until you get caught. At this point, he could work on it, he could really grow something long term. I may not be legit now, but the goal is to be legit. What's the problem, why can't he be legit? That's what I want to know. Is it because he didn't pay some sort of like business tax? It's, you know, unregulated because he's not paying into the system. I want to know what it is. I'm, I'm sure there's probably something with the FDA, right? If there's a drink involved, it's got to probably go through FDA. I, I don't know. Or maybe he's using like someone else's ingredients and mixing it as his own. I don't know the details on this, but listen, 20,000 a month, there's proof it works. That is money that I would take, reinvest all of that into becoming legit and getting it in shelves. This is very important to my livelihood, to keep it afloat and even more important, and that is putting Oye's in the store, making it something legal and, and making it a worldwide phenom. He hasn't talked yet about why it's not legal. That's a big one. Why isn't this legal? Why can't he do this himself? Listen, 20,000 a month. I would say pretty confidently with maybe $100,000, he should be able to get this in stores. Ooh, look at that brown. The brown is in town, yes. See, here's the thing. Like I said, I'm not a big drinker. Usually, like, if I do have a drink, I'll limit it to one, because usually I just, I feel tired and lethargic the next day. It's not, it's not worth it to me. But this seems interesting. Like, I like his passion behind it. Like, I think his story behind it, that's the appeal. Because if I just saw Oye by itself, eh, you know what, I wouldn't be that interested. But just because of him and how invested he is in this, I want one now. I won't tell you the type of juice I use, because it's a secret. Somebody put me on, they told me not to tell nobody. Because before this, I wasn't using this juice. He told me you gotta find juice that's thick and I can hold the liquor. That's true, listen, if other people knew how to make this drink, Guaranteed everyone would start making their own drinks. They wouldn't go to him. It's a word that I created around the time that I created Oye's and the word is Shabala. And Shabala means everything righteous moving forward. And it's a Shaba gang. It's a, it's a gang. It's a gang. You know, I know Vice, I know y'all used to gangs, right? But this is the most positive gang you ever heard of. It's the Shaba gang. 
I love that. I love the story behind it. In my opinion, that's what makes this drink. It's just the story. I wish they have a little sticker on the back that describes like who he is, where he came from, some of the background, some of the meaning behind it. I would love something like that. Remember, Snapple caps. I'm not sure who remembers that, but uh, like in the late 1990s, early 2000s, there was a thing called like the Snapple cap and you used to undo the Snapple cap and there'd be a little blip, and then you'd go and read the underside of the cap and there'd be like a fun fact or something like that. I would love to see that on this. Like you, you unscrew the cap and on the inside there's like a nice, a, a positive quote or something. A little secret. If you don't freeze them overnight, you ain't got enough time, go buy yourself some dry ice. This is a fun track, man. It's about the Oyes. Wow, he's got a song about the Oyes. Listen, he could really make this a big thing. He, he is a, a branding marketing machine. It, it's him. It's him. He is the one behind this. He is the reason this is successful. I don't think it's the Oyes. I think it's him. Every time I get on the road, I'll play this. Turn left on Stewart Avenue. Ah, I hate when that happens, when you're jamming out to a song, and then all of a sudden, Turn left up ahead. Oh, that was the chorus. That was the best part. You ruined it and then you have to play it over again. Now, COVID-19 is here. I used to care about the customer, but because I was at places where so many people, I just made a good product and that's all I needed to do. Now, with COVID, I have to make a good product and I have to have a good relationship with my customers. Oh, he is so smart and just willing to adapt. And I guarantee, I bet this experience is gonna help him 10 times more in the future from going and doing this. It just shows you his dedication. I got the Patron Mango, I got the Rum Punch. I okay. threw two big ones in there, oh, just good. for the love. Thank you know you. what I'm saying? Thank you, thank you. You got it. And my daughter will be home Wednesday. Okay. They just turned 21, so. Uh-oh, oh yeah. He's selling to everybody. And that's the great thing about who he is, is that his customer base can be anyone, and he can interact with anybody, Everyone likes the guy. He's got such a great attitude about everything. Again, it's easy to see why he's so successful. One day it hit me, it's like, come on, get it together, let's get going. So I come up here, usually I'm making my menus, presentation decks. Uh, the decks will be shown to potential investors. Right here, I got my total profits. That was in 2017, about $20,000. Yeah, this is me just, just having the idea saying like, I wanna. Dude, I wanna invest in this guy. I wanna invest, listen. If you're watching this right now and you need an investment and we could figure out how to do this all legally above the board, I would love to be a part of this. And, and, and I say this, by the way, as someone who doesn't drink, but I, I wanna try it. I'll, ha I'll have one, I'll have one. And if I could be a part of this operation in some way or another, legally, of course, I wanna do it. But you know what, I, I wanna make the distinction I'm doing this because of him. It's just his energy is so infectious through a computer screen that I, you can't even imagine like, if this is how I'm feeling watching this video, what would it be like in person? He is the type of person I would bet my money on. Right now we're in Brooklyn. We're about to go see my man, uh, Kid Super, big time fashion guy, man. He's been doing it for a minute. Him and his friends are gonna buy a couple drinks. That's okay, the Kid Super package. Here you go, baby. I don't know how it all works legally, but feels legal to me. To get drunk. To get drunk? To get drunk? That's what he has. Like, I'm like, no, like medium drunk. Here you go. Boom. <laughs> yeah, you know, the issues, my understanding was this, was that once a drink becomes a certain size or above a certain alcohol uh, concentration, it, it needs to have a cap that you could like seal instead of like a can. This looks like it has that. I'm not sure if there's a difference between it needing to be in glass versus plastic. I'm sure there's some sort of regulations behind this of like what alcohol content he could sell at. I don't know, but I think this would be really interesting to find out. <laughs> <laughs> like I remember interesting thing from my, uh, from my early days. When Four Locos were a thing, they had a big dispute about the alcohol content because of how big the can was, and they argued that it needed to be resealable because there's no way once you pop the whole like big can open, like one person could reasonably finish the entire thing. It's like opening up the can of like a little Coca-Cola, but it's like a huge big thing of wine. Like it needs to be resealed. So I'm sure there's some compliance issues around this in some way that could be tweaked. Today was amazing. This is the best day of the summer I've had since Corona happened. Probably a little over a thousand dollars. I may have not sold as much today as I usually would sell, but something more came out of it. I didn't know he was gonna call Jaeger and say, hey, we need to figure out how to make Jaeger Meister Oyes. Even if they don't invest in me, at least they know 
they know I'm here. I want to see somebody invest in him, and like I said, I would invest in him. But I'm doing it for him, not so much for the Oye. I'm sure Oye is a great product, but I just know whatever he's behind, it's going to do well. You just know. You just know. You can see his enthusiasm. It really shows through. 2020, in my head, was my last year selling drinks on the street. It just happened that COVID came around. Next year, you're gonna be catching me in the stores. You're gonna be catching me at the airports. You're gonna be catching me at the bars. Anywhere you go, you're gonna be catching the Oye vibe. <laughs> All right, so I'm reaching out to him on Instagram. Let's see. Let's see if there's some sort of way that I can invest in Oye and just be a part of it. I just, I like him. Maybe, maybe one day he can make a caffeinated, non-alcoholic Oye. That might be, uh, that might be up my alley. But overall, I gotta say, fantastic video from Vice. I love his energy. It goes to show you, again, just so many different ways that you can make money. And, and sure, like, even though it might not be legal, oh, well, it's not legal now. Okay, okay, fine. But it just goes to show you, I mean, his level of dedication for what he's doing, fantastic. And his customer base is pretty much everybody. He's getting along with everybody. He's so personable. He really believes in what he does. He's excited about it. And that is the reason why, in my opinion, he's going to be doing so well. So with that said, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. As always, make sure to destroy the like button, subscribe button, and notification bell. Also, feel free to add me on Instagram. I post it pretty much daily. So if you want to be a part of it there, feel free to add me there as in the podcast, you guys, Coffee Hour. New episodes being posted every single Sunday. Enjoy. Good luck. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time.